Woke TikTok that gets kicked out the house by based mom for not paying rent. I, I'm not obligated to, and I, I can't afford to. Guess what? Doesn't matter. You can't just tell me I have two weeks to find somewhere. You've had over a month. And no, I haven't. Look, you have done nothing but dig your heels in and try and make me feel bad about you. No, I haven't. I've been trying to educate you. No, oh, God. education is brainwashing. No, it's not. You just won't listen to me. No, I'm not going to listen to this crap. Now you talk I have me. schizophrenia. I don't care what you have. I don't. <laughs> it doesn't mean we live in squalor. And it doesn't mean you're a bully. You, I'm not even bully you literally dead need me misgender me and tell me that well done mother get her out of there if she actually was diagnosed from a doctor to have schizophrenia with his resources for that she'd have access to medicaid she'd have access to group homes she'd have access to things so this more than likely is a self-diagnosis and just another way for her to bully her mother to staying in a place that she lives in complete squalor within how about instead of activating your special schizophrenia victim trap card you get a job what's the problem oh because you got to take your piercings out your nose and color your hair a normal color what i've noticed so frequently about these far left crazy types is that their only way to get out of situations of accountability and responsibility is to solely rely on these weird narratives that are pushed by mainstream media as well as these academic institutions. And then they want to activate their special victim trap cards like You triggered my trap card! Dead naming misgender fairy go! Harassment dragon go! Throw out a potent potion of self-diagnosed mental illness go! But when faced with real life tasks that adults have to engage into, such as cleaning up for yourself, contributing to the cost of living once you're over the age of 18 years old, practicing discipline, getting a job that you can sustain so you can pay for the lifestyle that you live. That's when the reality crumbles and victimhood rears its ugly seven-headed head. But it's always hilarious to see that once they're extracted from their echo chambers and have to face and deal with the realities of the world, they begin to realize that their BS theories no longer work. Good job, mom. You're going from 89,000 yep. to 758,000. Correct. No, it's not correct. It's impossible. Who says it's impossible? I do. You can't go from 90,000 to 750,000 in one go. Yeah, but that's, I think I can, because I did 89,000 on my own. So if I can do that on my own with not a lot of investment, with a 250,000 investment and staff and more stock, I think that is achievable. You may think so, but I'm telling you, it's never going to happen. I don't think there's anything wrong with being ambitious. No, ambitious is one thing. Unrealistic is nonsense. So the context of this is that she's on one of those Shark Tank type shows, and she has a drop shipping business where she ships pajamas from China. But you guys already know when I hear the word delusion when it comes to the modern woman today, my ears perk up. So delusion versus being ambitious. Now, before we jump on a gender train, I guarantee you there's thousands of clips on the internet of dudes doing this exact same thing. Just in completely different context, but I will saying is that believing that you're going to 10X on your second year of business is Quite unrealistic. I remember Kevin Samuels used to host that Lion's Den business Shark Tank type show back in the day where you'd have a ton of men come through citing completely delusional things that they should be able to accomplish. The fact of the matter is, is that most new entrepreneurs are completely irrational or unrealistic. And the thing is, is that if they attain a lot of success initially, then they think that they can 2X, 3X, 4X going into the year, but they don't realize is that once they begin to grow their business at scale, there'll be a lot of unforeseen complications within that as well that will hamper their profit margins. For example, look at me. When I first started out doing this channel, I was doing group conversations where someone sit right up next to me and then goddamn hit, which is a completely <laughs> unforeseen complication, but I was able to turn water into wine and start a single 
reactions. But I'd argue that these type of unforeseen things will happen more in a more physical business. But instead of crying over spilled milk, because I can no longer do the old type of content, I just became flexible and learned how to do this reaction commentary type stuff. But I would be ridiculous to think if the type of growth that, that I experienced back then is the same type of growth that I might experience into the future, unless there's going to be some other catastrophic event that forces everyone back into the household. I've had both. I enjoy men. I personally respect men's decision making. It's quicker, it's less layers, it's less fuss. I don't care if you can't do something because you're on your period. Let's move. Um, <laughs> Thank you. It's, ex it's Thank extremely you. exhausting when, especially in a business place, we need to make decisions quick and they need to be innovative. So with women, I'm not saying they're not these things, but it takes them longer to make that decision to be innovative. It takes them longer to make a decision. The decision is keeps changing. Um, I'm not saying men don't have that capacity, but that capacity seems to be shorter, which is what I enjoy more. I think this topic about bosses is always an interesting one because I think men are far better suited from an evolutionary perspective to be within leadership positions. However, at the same time, I'd be remiss to acknowledge that I've worked for fantastic female bosses. Being a fantastic leader is not solely determinant on gender, but rather it emanates from having the talent or the skill sets needed for that particular position. And what I find interesting as well is that she made a sort of underhanded insult saying, I don't care if you're on your period, which is actually an indicator of woman to woman bullying, which is actually prevalent and underreported in the workplace. Despite the cultural perception that men are always responsible for creating hostile workplaces for women, I'd wager you'd be hard pressed to find a woman who hasn't had a workplace made miserable for her by another woman. But what feminists consistently refuse to realize is many of the obstacles women face at work are placed by women. We constantly compete with each other. It begins in the schoolyard and continues into the workplace. And while men and boys will spar with aggressive confrontation, women undermine each other in subtle, toxically feminine ways. I don't care if you can't do something because you're on your period. Let's move. And they do it to gain the coveted status of a term first coined in the 1970s by researchers at the University of Michigan, the queen bee. Now in a workplace context, the queen bee is usually a woman in a senior position who is cuttingly unhelpful to her female co-workers. She may verbally <coughs> abuse them, publicly humiliate them, or use the cover of smiling passive aggression to undermine their achievements or chip away at their confidence. And with that, I've actually had women bosses that told me that they don't like to hire women employees for pretty much the same issues that this young lady is calling out regarding a boss. Nevertheless, just as I said before, being a competent leader is not gender specific. It's developed and nurtured through work ethic. However, I think men are at a tactical advantage from an evolutionary biology perspective. There's a lot more disagreeable men than disagreeable women on average. And trust me, when you're in a leadership position, you're going to be faced with some confrontation. If you're a savage and you get out there and you grind hard and you want it bad enough you can run all these guys over man and this whole thing people don't want to go back to work and you know they want to stay home and all this bullshit man this next generation is just such a fucking group of pussy, man I, I just for, for the small group of savages out there Honestly, this is the most easiest non-competitive time in the history of manhood to be a top competitor of man. And the reason that that is is because there's so many things that are tranquilizing the average man in society today, whether it be addiction to video games or addiction to the hub or feminized mainstream media. All of these things are simply decimating and defeating modern man today. And the thing is, is like, I think that you should work to become 1% better each and every day. And at the end of that year, technically you should be 365% than what you were when you originally started. While everyone else is taking it easy and chilling and having fun, that's your opportune time to be punishing your competition by outworking them. Questions, comments, concerns. Y'all already know what to do. Me over the Torres and Reviews at gmail.com. What you guys think about today's video? Let me know in the comment box down below. I want to see what you guys think about it, whether or not you agree with me, whether or not you disagree with me. Last but not least, my Patreon, the best Patreon on this side of the internet. 
connected to my Discord server. If you want to have conversations with myself and those within my inner community after the videos are done, then y'all already know where to find me. Until next time, you two. Peace! You don't want to see me get vexed. Bots on your phone, tell them man you can't jet. The big girl, the ones who can't stretch. Breaking the neck when we get the car next. You don't want to see me get vexed. Bots on your phone, tell them man you can't jet. The big girl, the ones who can't stretch. Breaking the neck when we get the car next. Dead bars, need defibrillation ASAP. Get boxed with a straight gap. I'm reminded of my state daylight. Every time that they incline, we go way back. All they want to be is just ruthless. Never seen warfare.